invite our next speaker up. It's Nancy Oakley, and she is actually one of the most vibrant, ambitious, and unstoppable entrepreneurs. Born and raised in Thailand, Nancy Oakley's ambition, ambitious mindset carried her from childhood into her teen years and when she eventually immigrated to the U.S. during the controversial Vietnam War. Nancy is a breast cancer survivor and has un overcome numerous personal tragedies throughout her life while she strives to achieve even higher goals for herself. She is also aware of the benefits of giving back and spends much of her time raising awareness and securing funds for victims of domestic abuse, including women and children. Nancy has written five novels, one of them being written into a screenplay. In recent years, Nancy has also been the star of a reality show, a TV talk show host, radio host, and producer, and she also resides in San Antonio. So without further ado, I would like to introduce our keynote speaker tonight, Nancy Oakley. Good evening, everyone. My name is Nancy Suku, known as Nancy Oakley. It's an honor to be your guest speaker on a very important of domestic violence awareness. Thank you so much, Mr. Louis San, Adela, and the rest of organizer for allowing me to stand in front of you tonight. I am an entrepreneur. Auto eight national book bestseller, a songwriter. My inspiration writing my first book, that because in 2004, my sister, Pani Sukto, was murdered by her husband. And my nephew got stabbed it eight times by his dad. God saved him. For most of his young life, eight-year-old Anthony Sukto suffered in silence and watched in horror as his father beat and brutalized his mother. But on a cool fall day in 2004, all of that changed. Neighbors say they witnessed Anthony's father mumbling and pacing in his yard, wielding a large knife. Then at 4 a.m., dispatchers received this desperate 911 call. This is 911. What's going on there? Please help me. My daddy told me what they're not I'm gone. Please send the army men. Eight-year-old Anthony tried to describe the horrific situation to the 911 dispatcher, Kristen Woodrow. My daddy told me you were to put your knife. Your daddy killed you with a butcher knife? Yeah, it's true. Okay, how, how did that happen if you're talking to me? I woke up, finally, um, my dad, he was killing my mom, and then my, my, my dad told me to go on the other bed, and then he was like, you're next, and then he killed me. I was still alive. I kind of survived. Can you hold me? Anthony's father had brutally attacked his mother and then stabbed Anthony six times in the face, neck, and stomach. Then his father left the house, convinced that both Anthony and his mother were dead. Well, Kristen tried to keep Anthony on the line. Are you bleeding, Anthony? Uh -huh. Where are you bleeding from? From my stomach. From your stomach? Uh -huh. Are you there by yourself? No, my mom's already dead and I'm only the survivor. I tried to reassure him we're, we're on the way, we're almost there, just to give him just that little bit of hope that he might need to survive. Okay, stay on the phone with me, okay? Then Anthony's frantic call took a frightening turn. Oh my gosh. What? I have to go. Why? What's the matter? So why did Anthony hang up the killer his own father had come back? 
But miraculously, at the exact same time, the police arrive, capture Anthony's father, and find the brave little boy near death. Look at this. I look over to the sidewalk, and there's a paramedic who was already working on Anthony, and uh, he was covered in blood. Um, you know, I, I remember looking at him and just going up to him, just kind of looking to see how serious it was. Judging the types and number of injuries that he had, I would have expected them to have been probably not survivable. I threw up a prayer right there, and I just, you know, I, I didn't know if he was going to make it. I specifically remember looking into his eyes and just, I've seen a death look, as we call it, before, and he had that look in his eyes. It, it almost didn't seem real. Anytime I'm in situations like that, that seem at times to be maybe more than I can handle, um, I'm always hoping that there's uh, um, extra sets of hands, let's say, maybe guiding me. Well, the paramedic said he threw up a prayer, and that prayer was answered. Please welcome Anthony and his aunt and guardian, Nancy Oakley. Sit here next to me. So, Anthony, how are you? Good. You're healed. You're better. Yes. That's great. I heard you said that angels told you to play dead. Yes. Yeah. Did they speak to you, or how did that happen? They just told me to play dead. Angels did? Yes. Okay. And then what made you make the 911 call? The angels lifted me up to the, the phone. The angels lifted you up to the phone. Yes. And so when you hung up the phone suddenly with the uh, 911 dispatcher, the operator, it's because your dad had walked back in the room. Did you play dead again? Yes. You did. You did. Yeah. This is a brave child. It's been a while since Anthony left his Seattle neighborhood to live with his aunt and uncle in Florida, and a couple of his old friends wanted to be here today to give him a big high five. Police Sergeant Mark Eeks and Fireman Jeff Calhoun, come on out to say hello to Anthony. These are the guys that saved your life. He's as active as any eight-year-old, and today he's on a trip to what will soon be his permanent home in Florida. But he can't outrun his past. Phys physically, he's okay, you know, but mentally, I don't think he's. I don't think he's there yet. Nancy Oakley is Anthony's aunt, just finishing up the paperwork to get full legal custody of her nephew. Anthony talks to her about the murder that tore his family apart, but he didn't feel comfortable sharing that with us. He's an eight-year-old who misses his mom, and he survived with the energy of a boy who doesn't want to miss anything again. Oh. I'm good at baseball, and I'm good at basketball shooting hoops. But I never tried karate yet. You just beat me up, dude. From the police family who adopted Anthony Sukto here and the new family welcoming him home. That's the most important and special thing is I can, I want to give him a good life. It will be a good life. And the message from a boy who Bye, finally has you. his life back. Thank you very, very, thank you very much. At SeaTac. Brian Kellamy, Q13 Fox News. A lot of love in that boy's future. Nancy Oakley should have legal custody of Anthony within about a month. Anthony is now being raised in Florida by his aunt Nancy, who's also keeping his mother's memory alive. Mommy. This is a picture of your mommy, right? Is that when you were together? Uh-huh. And this is her also? Uh-huh. What was her name? Prani. I think about her a lot. There he goes! He still has nightmares about the day his mom was murdered. Nice job, but today, nice Anthony is recovering surprisingly well, thanks to the love of his family and friends. The guy who hit in the clutch when it mattered was Anthony. And thanks to those angels who he says saved his life.
Good job, buddy. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. He says goodbye to us with a song, a special song that means a lot to Anthony. We cry, holy, 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 I want to see. That is very pretty. I like that. Maybe you're going to be a singer when you come yeah. out. <laughs> How does it make you feel when you sing that song? It feels like God is next to me. As incredible as it might sound, Anthony's 911 phone call might not be admissible in court when his father Tony goes on trial next month for murder and attempted murder. A recent U.S. Supreme Court ruling allows trial judges to determine whether or not 911 calls like Anthony's are hearsay evidence or actual cries for help. On 2006, Oprah Winfrey invited me and my nephew to be a guest of her show to share the story about domestic abuse. I, myself, am a victim of domestic violence. <sighs> My father was a gambler, drinker, and liked to abuse my mother. He lost our home. We were forced to go hiding in a mountain and form the gangster long shot. When I was 10 years old, I was beaten by mosquito that carried malaria while I was picking a mushroom, hunting food for my family. I died for a few minutes from malaria and I have a chance to meet God. But he wasn't ready to take me yet. My father, drinking, gambling, and screaming at my mother nonstop. My brother, 15 years older than me, left home and searched for education and better life. My two older sisters married and were happy to leave home. The Vietnam War changed Southeast Asia and Thailand. Rich American soldiers were everywhere and business were blooming. I know there was something out there for me at 8.15, I tell my mom, I have to leave home to go look for a better life. And then I will come back home for them after I accomplish my goal. I was able to find the lodging with other Thai women who was married to Malikan military men. They treat me as their own family. I was quite happy with them. One weekend, they were invite a group of military friends to their home. That night, my life changed forever. The men were partying, drinking, and they all raped and abused me, one by one, repeatedly. I was so, so breathing, and I couldn't move. I was left to die. But I was saved by God again. He sent an angel to save me. After hospital, I stay. I was slowly covered and went on my way again to a different city. I end, I end up in other area near military base. 
Then I met my ex-husband, and we fell in love. My life changed again. I ran into an abusive relationship like my mother. Sorry. My ex-husband slept with other women throughout the time we were dating. It bothered me after we married, but I saw hope, dream, fame, and fortune into my life. So I refused to accept what he was doing wrong to me. After we moved to the Philippines, he became mean and more abusive, abusively abused. He beat me when I was nine months pregnant. I almost lost my daughter. It's, it's pretty pretty love story from beginning because he's young, I'm young, and I'm like, wow, somebody really going to marry me. I thought he gonna be my prince, but he not, you know, so. Then they have squad and party. My husband says he's not coming with me. I'm like, why not? And because I know he had planned already with somebody else. But then the commander wife came and said, no, let's go. And when I went, that's how I see, you know, he was kissing another woman. With a nine months pregnant, kicked me nine months pregnant. So, but again, my mom, you know, that at that time I got my mom stay with me, and my mom said, "Oh, you cannot get divorced. We don't believe in divorce. You know, it's okay." Thing like that, because my mom is a victim of abuse as well. When we move back to the state and visit his family, one of them tried to kill me with the red poison. My ex-husband continued to abuse me, took our children away from me, and left me homeless. I do speak English, I don't write English. I don't know what to do. I feel like I have nothing left. I tried to commit suicide. It was my stupid luck that it did not work neither. Can you believe that? It doesn't work. God, God had planned for me. I tried to put my life back by moving to Texas. My life changed for a better. I met a nice young Christian man. I got educated and worked many job. I grew to be more strong and confident over the time. But my nice Christian man become really controlling. Crisis visit me again. I found out I have a urine cancer that almost caught me in my life. But God felt my mission in life was not complete. So he didn't take me. He did not want to take me. My life took other strange turn. I begin to wonder, why me, God, why? My younger sister had trouble first marriage and divorce. The second marriage caught her, her own life. I took custody of my eight-year-old nephew who was almost killed alongside of, her mother, of his mother. Even with emotional abuse, I have to stay with my husband to raise my nephew. My nephew now is in college. 
I am very, very proud of him. My work now is finished almost. Here is the most recent video on Inside Editions. It's the plea of a little boy begging for somebody to save him. Are you bleeding, Anthony? Uh huh. Where are you bleeding from? From my stomach. From your stomach? And this is that little boy today. I've survived the unthinkable. His name is Anthony Sukto. He was eight years old when he made the most heartbreaking 911 call imaginable. Ten years later, the scars on his stomach may have faded, but the memories of that terrible day are burned in his mind. In total, I think I stabbed like eight times. The crime is almost impossible to believe. Anthony's father, in a psychotic rage fueled by drugs, first butchered his wife and then turned on his son. The last thing I remember was just him like reaching back, swinging back, ready to attack me. And then next thing I know, I'm covered in blood. With a little boy's innocence, he begged for help. This is 911. What's going on there? Please help me. My daddy told me what's in my gun. I'm gone. Can you please send the army man for the ambulance? I woke up badly. Um, my dad, he was killing my mom. And then my, my, my dad told me to go on the other bed. And then he was like, you're next. And then he killed me. Two years after the nightmare, a 10-year-old Anthony appeared on Oprah with his aunt, who was raising him. What made you make the 911 call? The angels lifted me up to the phone. Anthony is now a student at the University of Denver, and we were with him as he celebrated his 19th birthday. There was a big surprise waiting for him. Dude, what? How are you doing? A visit from Police Sergeant Mark Eeks. He was one of the Lakewood, Washington police officers who responded to that little boy's call for help a decade ago. Thank you. Welcome. Please help me. My daddy told me what's in my gun. I'm gone. A haunting recording from the most terrible day in this young man's life. I feel that I have overcome many obstacles. I am free from abuse. I'm confident, financially strong enough to say my dream come true as a young girl from Thailand. End of story. On the second thought, maybe I am a living poster child who better represent domestic, domestic abuse person. What caused me to go from one abusive partner to another? I am still trying to find that answer. At what point would I break this cycle of attractions? I don't know. I wish I had all the answers. Here is a simple advice to young women facing a real potential violent relationship. I call the third rule. Recognize before it's explored. Run from it as fast as you can. Report it to local authority. Okay, everyone, I am sure there is many questions for me out there. Please feel free to ask questions. Thank you. Any question? Yes, ma'am. Oh, you know, I skipped one part. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. We're supposed to show you the quote for Sandy. Would you like, we'd, we'd would like to go ahead and try to show. But anyway, I wrote the book about my life story. It's called The Quote for Sandy. Uh, we already shoot the movie trailer by my executive producer, Corey Klan. We have movie trailer. 
I don't know we wear of it or not to show. Just abuse, right? We skip that. Um, by the end of this year, we are going to film in San Antonio. We having Nicholas Cage, Blue Diamond Philip, Oprah Winfrey will be a guest, and we're going to film them probably in February. Everybody welcome to attend. With this book, they can go in the set. No camera, one guest to meet the star so they can sign. Um, I skip one of the most important part of the film. I, I don't know how that happened. But there is uh, Regina. She's going to play my character. She is really, really, truly inspired person and amazing actor. Um, hopefully, the movie will be showing in two years because it takes a long time to make a movie. Um, for us to get one five minutes, it took two weeks or one month. As you know, you TV lady, take forever to get that. So um, it's going to be an amazing story because this is the proceed will go to domestic violence children who got abused and cancer. Um, I really thrilled to be able to share with you all tonight. I hope my speech or my story will share and touch other people's heart. And keep moving, do not give up, because there is no, no way to say keep up. As long as you have God, faith in your mind and your peace, that's what is keep you going. Myself, I struggling many times. I close to die for six times, but I refuse to give up because I have that faith. I stand before you tonight because I want to share that everything is possible if you wanted to make it happen. So looking to see the movie, but I also have total of its book out there and one of them is the Thai sanction that make into an animation game. The love story between me and one person also is going to make into a love story movie. So you guys, it's really hard and steamy. You need to look at that. <laughs> From sad to happy. Thank you. Before I say bye tonight, I would like to say thank you again to all the organizer, Mr. Louis San, Mr. Della, Melissa, and all the audience today. Thank you for inviting me to the Bowville, Texas. And of course, Nicole, a wonderful lady. And so glad and nice to meet you. And I thank God every day for letting me have opportunity to meet you all. God bless. Good night. One last thing. <laughs> you guys can have a picture with me out there with the red carpet. And take over by Nicole. <laughs> I must say, Nancy, everything that you've been through, she is the spunkiest person I've ever run into. You have a very big heart.